If you're a student, chances are you're pretty smart. And if you're pretty smart, you probably understand the importance of looking after our environment so it can keep looking after us. And being a student, you're probably also on the lookout for ways to save some money. Fortunately, it's possible to do both of these things at once. So here are the top seven ways that you can save the planet and yourself some cash. Number one, stop eating meat. Whoa, 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 don't turn off the video. It seems that many people would rather die than give up eating meat. And to be honest, I can completely understand that. I used to feel that way. But the fact of the matter is that the single most effective way that you can reduce your impact on the environment is to stop eating meat, which is why I did it. Looking at global greenhouse gas emissions by sector, we see that the largest contributions come from energy generation, industry, transport, and agriculture. Links to all the studies that I refer to, by the way, will be in the description below. Data indicates that the average Westerner emits 10 tonnes of CO2 per year, two and a half tonnes of which comes from their food. Now, that's much more carbon emitted per person than the global average, but this analysis has been done for Americans, so we're limited to that. Vegetarians have roughly two thirds the agricultural carbon impact of meat eaters, 1.7 tonnes emitted per person per year. And the majority of that difference comes from just not eating beef or lamb. Vegans have a still lower carbon impact, at 1.5 tonnes emitted per person per year, thanks to not eating dairy products. And they also have superpowers. If the world is going to avoid catastrophic climate change, we have to move away from a culture where meat consumption is everywhere. A 2014 report found that the world's meat industry causes more carbon emissions than the world's planes, trains, cars and ships combined. Now, that's not to say that nobody should eat meat. Just not eating meat during the week would significantly cut your personal carbon emissions, as would swearing off beef or lamb. And furthermore, meat is expensive. Estimates indicate that you could save about $750 or £500 a year by going veggie. There's a good reason why meat was originally only for special occasions. If you want to save yourself some serious money and do the planet some serious good, then swear off meat during the week or entirely. Number two, minimize your food waste. The other way to reduce the carbon impact of your food is to reduce the amount of food that you buy and then don't consume. Here in the UK, we check out an estimated 7 million tonnes of food per year. That's over 100 kilos per year per person, of which at least half is still edible. And about 50% of food waste doesn't come from retailers, but takes place here in homes. Here at the University of Exeter, a recent study showed that students specifically check out nearly 800 grams of food per week. And that's not even including the dubious cheesy chips that you buy and then forget about. All this waste adds up to an estimated £470 per person per year. So you can save serious money that could be better spent on booze or, you know, textbooks by learning to limit your food waste. Most of the food we've been in homes is either food that we've prepared and then not eaten, so we've got our portion sizes wrong, or food that's spoiled before we can even cook with it. So poor planning and impulse buys. To fix this, one, plan your meals for the week in advance, write a shopping list and stick to it. Two, store fruit and veg appropriately and refrigerate stuff where it's appropriate. Three, learn how to use your leftovers in new recipes. In particular, I recommend the BBC Good Food website. And four, consider sharing your food with housemates or with other students in schemes like Food Share Edinburgh. If we waste less food, then we don't need to buy as much, then retailers don't need to order as much, then farmers don't need to produce as much, and so we have lower global agricultural greenhouse gas emissions. Simples. Number three, be energy efficient. Along the same lines of trying to reduce our food waste, by reducing our energy waste, we're reducing our personal contribution to the single largest sector of greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. And also, save serious money. We're talking hundreds of pounds a year if you do this right. So, to help you do just that, one, only boil as much water as you need and don't overfill your kettle. Water takes a serious amount of energy to boil and so costs you serious money. Two, ask yourself if your house thermostat or central heating, if you're lucky enough to have one, has to be set as high as it is. Even reducing it by one degree could save you 75 pounds per year per house. Three, wash your clothes on a 30 degree cycle. Compared to a 60 degree cycle, you'll use 30% less energy and potentially save yourself another 75 pounds per year. Four, if you're not using something, turn it off. And no, standby doesn't count. This might sound obvious, but if you're not using the lights in a room, then you're saving money. And if you do this consistently across all your devices, like TVs and laptops, then you could save up to £120 per year. Five, and lastly, if you have a freezer, then defrosting it on the regular, say once a year, can save you serious money as the freezer doesn't need to work quite so hard to reach the same low temperatures. A freezer badly in need of a defrost can say it cost you up to 70 pence extra per day. So by defrosting a freezer, you're probably going to save about £80 per year on your energy bill. These are just some tips. There are some fantastic articles available online, such as those below, that will help you save even more money that you could put towards that round that you've definitely been dodging for the past few weeks.
Number four, use public transport. Kind of an obvious one by this point, but as transport forms such a large part of global greenhouse gas emissions, and it's 20% of our emissions here in the UK, by taking public transport and not driving cars wherever possible, you can make a serious decrease in your personal carbon budget. One study estimated that accounting for production, a car averaged 271 grams of carbon dioxide being emitted per person per mile, while a bus averaged 101 grams per person per mile. Or better yet, cycle. Even accounting for the increase in calories that you'll have to take in from cycling every day, a bike averages just 21 grams of carbon dioxide emitted per mile, so significantly lower than cars or buses. In fact, if everyone in Europe cycled as much as our most velophile citizens, the Danes, then it's estimated that Europe could cut its transport emissions by a quarter. As well as being great for the environment, cycling is also free once you've bought yourself a cheap bike, and campuses are great places to do that. Just make sure that you also buy a D-lock to keep your bike safe. It's great exercise, and it gives you buns of steel. Number five, make smart consumer choices. In a capitalist society, often the loudest actions we make are those with our money. Choosing to buy products or not to buy products based on their impact on the environment can induce significant change. And in particular, be careful about which products you buy that contain palm oil. Palm oil is one of the key drivers of deforestation in places such as Indonesia, Madagascar and Malaysia, where the rainforest is cut down to make way for vast plantations of the African oil palm tree. The oil from this tree is an incredibly useful substance that has a wide range of properties that make it useful in about half of all household products in the Western world. These properties are so wide ranging that it appears in everything from lipstick to biofuels to ice cream. The problem is that the world's increasing appetite for palm oil has led to huge habitat destruction and is the major reason why species such as the orangutan and the Sumatran tiger, along with hundreds of others are facing extinction, and the industry is also linked with the exploitation of local communities and child labour. At this point I'd normally try and put something funny in the video to lighten the mood, but it's kind of difficult when you're dealing with something as horrible as this. So to make a difference, if you're going to be buying products that do contain palm oil, make sure you buy products that display either the RSPO or green palm labels, because those labels indicate that the palm oil that's gone into that product was produced in a sustainable way. Also, where possible, just try to not buy products that contain palm oil if there is an alternative available. And there are some fantastic links online, such as some in the description, that give you lists of products that are suitable alternatives. It's basically impossible to not buy products that contain palm oil, but by buying palm oil products that contain sustainably sourced palm oil, sends a message to those companies that don't engage in sustainable practices. We the people want to live in an environmentally conscious world, so let us. Number six, recycle. This one isn't going to save you any money, but it's certainly going to do the environment a lot of good. Recycling is one of the easiest ways that you can reduce your personal environmental impact. And here in the UK, about 60% of the stuff that we put in the bin we could actually recycle. And that's not even including food waste that you could also compost. A recent study done in Scotland suggests that recycling aluminium, such as found in Coke cans, can save up to seven tonnes of CO2 being emitted per tonne of aluminium processed, relative to it just being chucked in landfill and making more and then lesser savings for other materials like paper and plastic. And the carbon side of recycling is only one aspect of it. By not recycling paper, you are directly contributing to global deforestation and degradation of vulnerable habitats. And unrecycled plastic isn't going anywhere for the next 500 years, which sucks, especially when all that plastic inevitably ends up in the ocean. And so it sucks even more if you're a fish or a turtle. At the end of the day, you could be doing the environment several favours by just putting your rubbish in a slightly different coloured bin and maybe taking two seconds to sort it into glass, metal, paper and plastic. And as a student, I know how lazy we are, but come on guys, pull some weight for the team here. And number seven, get engaged with your campus green schemes. Because universities are full of serially intelligent people, such as your good self, almost every uni will either have an official or a student-led organisation that's dedicated to not screwing over the environment quite so hard. Here at Exeter, where I'm doing my PhD, that is the Green Unit who helped me put together this video. Thank you guys. Thanks in part to work from the Green Unit, our uni has extensive recycling, a verdant campus, lots of water fountains that allow the reuse of plastic bottles, multiple schemes that encourage students to get involved in sustainability and conservation work, and classes like slow cooking that get students to move away from processed foods and ready meals that are really resource intensive. Exeter is exceptional in this regard, but your uni will have similar schemes in place. And if you think they're not doing enough, and you have an idea that you'd like to see put into place, then go and take it to them. Because unis are defined by what their students do, and while chugging VKs and sleeping in the library is undoubtedly important, a culture of respect for the environment and an awareness of sustainability is something that I think we can add to our national student identity and make a real difference. So there you go, all very achievable ways that you as a student can reduce your impact on the environment. 
And if you have any specific further tips that you'd like to share, then please put them in the comments below and we can all get a bit more eco-friendly together. And make sure you check the description below this video for all the links that I've been referring to. Thanks for watching, now go save the world.